Let me ask you a question. Say the cost of one pen is 15 rupees. The cost of one pen is 15 rupees. Okay. So, what will be the cost of two pens? Simple. It would be 2 into 15, that is 30. Similarly, the cost of three pens would be 3 into 15, that is equal to 45 rupees. You see, as the number of articles increases, even the total cost increases along with it, right? Let's look at one more example to prove it. In a bank, if we deposit 1000 rupees, then the bank pays an interest of 100 rupees, okay? And the same time, if we deposit 2000 rupees, then the bank pays an interest of 200 rupees. Similarly, on depositing 3000 rupees, it pays 300 rupees as the interest. Again, we see that as the amount increases, even the interest paid by the bank increases. In the first example, the cost of the pens was increasing with the increasing number of pens. So, let's see what happens if we calculate the ratio of total cost of pens upon the total number of pens for all three situations. For one pen, we had to pay 15 rupees. So, the ratio is 15 upon 1, which is equal to 15. Now, for two pens, we paid 30 rupees. So, the ratio is 30 upon 2 and that is again equal to 15. Finally, we paid 45 rupees for 3 pence. So, we get the ratio as 45 upon 3 and that is yet again equal to 15. So, what did we observe here? Clearly, we can see that the ratio of the total cost of pence to the number of pence remained constant in all three situations. Similarly, if we look back at the second example and calculate the ratio of the amount deposited by us to the interest paid by the bank, in all three situations, we get 1000 upon 100, that is 10 for the first situation. Then 2000 upon 200 is again equal to 10 in the second situation, while we have 3000 upon 300, yet again, equal to 10 in the third situation and it's the same thing again and again the ratio remained constant for all the situations you see when one quantity increases the other quantity also increases but the ratio of the first quantity to the second quantity remains constant in every situation this is when we say that our first and second quantities are in direct variation and so, we say that the total cost of pens and the total number of pens are in direct variation. As the number of pens increases, even the cost increases. Similarly, the interest paid by the bank and the amount deposited are also in direct variation. Because as the deposit increases, even the interest increases. In general, let's say uh, we have two quantities, x and y. And if we find that as the values of x increases, the value of y also increases in such a way that the ratio x is to y does not change and remains constant. This constant could be any value. So, um, let's just assume it is represented by the letter k. So, we say that x and y are in direct proportion if x is to y is equal to k or x equal to ky. Now, let's look at a different example. Say we have a book that has 300 pages in total. If we read 10 pages every day, then we will complete it in 30 days, right? Because 300 upon 10 is equal to 30. At the same time, if we read 15 pages every day, we will complete reading the book in 20 days because 300 divided by 15 is equal to 20. So, if we read 10 pages per day, we need 30 days to finish the book. If we read 15 pages per day, we need 20 days to finish the book. This means that as we increase the number of pages, we are reading per day, the number of days decreases. That is, one quantity increases when the other quantity decreases. 
Another thing that we need to observe here is the product of the two quantities. If we multiply the number of pages we are reading in a day with the total number of days we need to finish the book, we get 10 into 30 that is equal to 300 in the first case. In the second case, the product is 15 into 20, which is again 300. So, you see the product of the two quantities remain constant. In this case, we say that the two quantities are in inverse variation. That is, the number of pages we read in a day and the number of days we need to finish the book are in inverse variation. In general, two quantities x and y are set to vary in inverse proportion if the product of x and y is a constant, say k. Therefore, when x, y is equal to k, we say x and y inversely vary with respect to each other. To summarize, we can say that if we have two quantities, x and y, they will be in direct variation if x upon y is constant and they will be in indirect variation if x into y is a constant. With this in mind, let's solve a problem where we have different values of x and y and we have to identify whether they vary directly or inversely. We'll first find the ratio of x is to y for the different values of x and y and if the ratio is constant, we can say that they are in direct variation. For the first set of values, x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 24. So, x is to y is equal to 2 upon 24 that is 1 upon 12. Next, we have x is equal to 5 and y is equal to 60. Again, x is to y will be 5 upon 60 and that is also 1 by 12. Then we have x is equal to 3 and y is equal to 36. Here x is to y is equal to 3 upon 36 which is 1 by 12. Finally, when x is equal to 6 and y is equal to 72, we get x is to y as 6 upon 72 and that is also equal to 1 by 12. Since the ratio of x is to y is constant for all the values of x and y, we say that x and y are in direct variation. That was fairly simple, wasn't it? I sincerely hope that throughout this session, your levels of interest were in direct variation with the progress of our topic. Either way, this marks the end of another interesting math lesson. I hope you think the same. I'll take your leave now and uh, even though we have practiced a bunch of problems, I urge you to practice more and I'll see you soon in the next chapter. Tutamate. For more amazing video lectures, download the free app on the Apple App Store or Google Play Store.